All right, the dash. So uh, this is the veneer I got um, from uh, veneersupplies.com, I believe. Uh, great place. Um, the pictures of each individual uh, lot of uh, veneer that they have. So you can order this, and it's literally the piece that comes to your door. Um, and the prices are way better uh, than I found anywhere else. Um, all right, so the dash. This is actually... Uh, the original um, I have gone the first step is go through and, and clean up and fix some areas someone had added a hole here I'm sure that was for maybe the turn signal indicator um, I have plugged that um, I fortunately thought about the fact that this door I'm gonna have to have some way to get it in place um, I, I can't believe I almost just put this in here and didn't realize that I was going to have to come up with a rig to one. I got to get this properly aligned. Um, you can see it's a little high. Can, can you see that? Yeah. I mean, you can see the gap at the end of that. So this needs to be adjusted. Um, this hinge needs to be fit just a little bit better. And then I need to get that in a position and then be able to fix it in place. So that when I do the veneer, it doesn't, it you know, that the patterns are going to line up. Um, this will have a backing veneer. Uh, I got a nice backing veneer from them. Um, so I will uh, figure out how to do that and we'll do the back first. And then that way, um, hopefully that will make this a little bit easier to get in place. But uh, that means I need to get these the same thickness. Um, while this is original, maybe they're mismatched um so i'm not you know I, i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on with that maybe they replaced the door um also i have uh the replacement trim for these and uh actually i have like the original I'll give you an idea of what we're talking about uh this goes around the door and then there's one that goes around um the dash itself so um again before I get this on here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these back on, test fit everything, and make sure um, that it lines up right. Uh, I'd hate to get done with the veneer and then these guys not fit. All right, and uh, one last thing. This will be uh, book match. This will be the center side. Um, and probably that way so that we get um there's a little bit of a curve in the burl here and i'd like the curve of the dash to be this way so up and then down um all right so let me uh i'm gonna run up and get everything test fitted and then uh, i'll bring you back when i get ready to start putting the backing on all right so the first thing i'm gonna do is do the backing veneer um in this piece it's book match as well but it's uh, lengthwise um, now I don't really care about that I don't care about them meeting well in the back but I thought since I've never done this before I would go ahead and give this a try so again never done this before so this may if, if you know what you're doing this is probably just became the cringe channel or the comedy channel I don't know so what I did was I laid these um, over the other way Lined them up the way they wanted them. I taped them. I flipped this back over. Um, and I've got a straight edge that goes down uh, over the overlap where I'd like to cut. I've got the veneer saw. And uh, I will now, tr <laughs> hopefully, cut just down this and not weave off and, and all those things. So uh, we'll sa see how it went. Okay, well, that went pretty well. Um, that may not how you're supposed to do it uh, but it, it worked for me um, I, one thing I might say I got the veneer saw from uh, veneersupplies.com and uh, they gave you the option of getting it sharpened which I did um, and they also said there's numerous warnings to be careful with saw and I was but I bumped me a little knuckle with it anyway and you can't even see a cut but it kind of hurts. It's like sticking yourself with a needle. Um, it's really sharp. Uh, my nice aluminum straight edge, I was trying to stay up against it. I managed just cutting part of it. 
Um, so my straight edge isn't much of a straight edge anymore, but it's fine. Um, as far as this meeting, I would say that, well, obviously there's an issue. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, that's, that's, that's fine. That's good. So again, this is just a back piece. Um, I didn't really care, but I thought it would be good uh, for practice. Now, I will be doing the book match on the front, and it will be two things. Against the grain, a cross cut. Um, uh, not against, but a, <laughs> across the grain. And then, uh, but it should be shorter. So I only have like, uh, you know, 12 inches that I need to get right. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. All right, so... I think again I no idea what I'm doing here but I think that um, I tape these together um, I turn it over I think I'm gonna put um, I'm using polyurethane glue I think I'm gonna put the glue on this um, I will spray the dash uh, with water set it on there and then uh, I've got this uh, piece underneath put on top and then I've got um, all those uh, blocks of steel depend on that. I do not have a vacuum bag, uh, but I think that those blocks of steel will be heavy enough to get this job done. All right, so got, uh, what's that, wax paper on the bottom. We've got our dash. We have our veneer of wax paper. We have a uh, half inch board to distribute the weight, hopefully. And then we have these plates. Um, I think these plates weigh a little over 100, maybe 150 pounds. Um, it's basically all I can carry. Um, so, well, now nah, it's probably about 125. Uh, all right, so we got one, two, three, four. So that's uh, 500, six, 700 pounds. I, I know that is nothing compared to vacuum press, uh, but it's what I have. Um, and I want to get this done I can't buy a uh, I mean I could buy a vacuum bag and pump and all that stuff just to do the dash and I will if I have issue with this adhering but I mean to be perfectly honest using uh, the polyurethane glue I've glued things together by accident that I couldn't get apart so I'm pretty sure that following the directions and doing this is going to result in a good bond all right well we'll see you in a while so if you saw this uh, coming, you were right. Um, probably a little too much glue. Uh, you know, at, fresh off the mistake of not putting enough paint on an edge, uh, I wasn't gonna make that mistake. So that's the good news. The bad news is um, you know, a lot of cleanup. Uh, another thing I didn't think about is while I got this perfectly aligned and it's wonderful and it's still in that same position, I should have put like, I don't know, a rope or something in here that um, maybe I could pull out rather than spending the next 27 hours uh, trying to get that polyurethane out of there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, uh, the way I cut the book match on this and used the straight edge and all that was completely wrong. Um, so when we go and do the, um, the other one, um, I'll show you. <laughs> A better way of doing it um, I probably should have googled that before I did it but hey this is the channel where you do something wrong and then do it again all right let me uh, clean this mess up and then uh, we'll get to the other side all right mess cleaned up so other than uh, not knowing what I'm doing doing it wrong and making it take you know, three times longer than it should, turned out really good. I'm happy with it. Um, this is the back, of course. So I now know, um, or I have a better idea of what to do on the front. So um, I do watch videos and I, and I do research before I do these things. I don't just walk in and do it wrong. Um, but I find that um, no matter how much I watch the videos and no, no matter how much I pay attention, uh, I still do it wrong the first time. And then after doing it wrong, you have a better appreciation for the video. You can go back and watch it again or, or go back and read something again. And it makes a whole lot more sense. Um, so I think a, a lot of my first time is, um, you know, doing it wrong and understanding why that's wrong and understanding why 
doing it a different way works good. All right, so uh, yeah, we can flip this over, um, do the proper cut for uh, book making, book matching, and then uh, we'll put it on the other side. Uh, but I, I did a lot of uh, cutting and sanding on this, like cutting with the razor blade, but um, it, I didn't have any issues with the veneer pulling away, so that's good. All right, so we'll uh, get this other side done. This is actually really cool. If I had a different color um, on the car, um, I'd love to have this veneer. Um, but since I've got such a dark green, um, I wanted to go with the, uh, the darker walnut color. But it's cool veneer. Uh, so one thing that fortunately I remembered to do from the other side is to uh, drill these holes through. Uh, so that way I'll be able to go back the other way um, when I get the veneer on the other side. All right, so uh, in this piece, there is sort of a, a, a through knot right there. And then of course, this book match so this on the other end. Um, I can get this down toward the bottom. Um, and then that keeps it off this edge and it keeps off the other edge. Uh, and, and I think I like that. I, I sort of uh, just trace that out with pencil, which probably shows through um, and I like that I, I think that's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be where we go so uh, the thing I was seeing um, since I know that to cut this I know that this edge uh, is gonna be straight all the way across I can uh, and I know that the mirror part is in the even is in the middle I can flip these over, align from that corner, right there, keep that parallel to this edge, and then do a, um, a square cut down through here, and that should give me what I want. Uh, one thing I was wondering was if you, and I don't know this, um, it would seem that and I could turn it over this way. Um, and then since this is, um, they're parallel and this side's parallel, I could align the bottom, come over here, align the top. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, the, the idea would be that when you put the line down you could put the line this way and it wouldn't matter because when you flip these over um, you would have that that cross would then match so uh, but I, I'm not gonna do it that way so um, again you know we, we've got just this section here and just this section here uh, that's even gonna be visible all right so uh, flip this over uh, my new straight edge and is going to be, um, well, I'll, I'll set this up and I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the ramble there. So the, the point I was trying to make was that if, if you didn't cut this square, um, then your pieces could, when, when you flip them over, would be like V shaped or, you know, out of alignment. So I was thinking the way you could protect from that was to flip the other one over. Um, that's sort of a, Somewhat of a trick for other woodworking, but I, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. Instead, I've got the um, top piece of this veneer uh, parallel to this edge. Um, I set up straight edge I'm going to cut against um, perpendicular to this edge. I know that this is um, a parallel piece, so I'm good with that. Uh, one, a couple things on the, the sawing. Um, so this has a bevel on this side. And that's going to be on your waist side. Um, it's made to sit flat up against something. Um, and then you want to sort of be pressing uh, the, the blade up against your straight edge like that. Um, and then come back this way. And then that does the cut. And, uh, of course, as always, light cuts. Um, it cuts a couple to get through that. And if I had three hands or I had a tripod handy, I would just hold this. Okay, so that turned out uh, really good. A little surprised by that. 
Um, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised when it works, but uh, that's certainly what I'm looking for. Um, I, I got a nice tight fit. I've got um, the grain is, is mirrored. Um, it, I don't really care, but um, this will let me set it right here in the middle. Um, and then when we go over, you know, I miss this uh, little knot hole there. And then I miss the knot hole here. So I think the thing that I need to worry about is having this sort of cattywampus like that. Uh, but I think since these two holes are in the center, as long as I get that on the, um, right in the middle of these two holes on that line, then it should be fine. All right, so all we need to do is glue the veneer to the side it's laying on, <laughs> not to this side. Uh, that, that'd be fun. All right. Y'all missed all the fun. Um, actually, I just was so busy doing it, I forgot to, to film it again. Um, one cool thing that uh, I thought of after the fact, unfortunately, um, as I literally put nearly 2,000 pounds of steel plates, I had some more up in the garage on this, um, I realized that what I could really, well, in addition to all the weights, was clamping it. It would be great. You got the area here here and of course on each end but nothing in the middle to offset so i just drilled a hole in uh the top of my table here and put uh ran my pipe clamp through there and then was able to use that clamp what i didn't think about because i'm not used to having it because i just got it is my uh hindi planer with a table designed just to do this type of stuff uh, so yeah, so this thing is big enough to have uh, put that dash on it and <laughs> look at all the hold downs that one would have uh, to clamp things. So um, likely not to be doing any more veneer on the uh, on the MG anyway, but uh, I, I got to remember that I have this table. Um, and of course, this is not just any table. Uh, this is, uh, I think, five thousandths front to back flat. So <laughs> It's a great table. All right, anyway, so this guy, what went well, what didn't go well? Um, it went great. Uh, the only issues I have are there's some areas where the uh, burl went down. I think maybe you can see that right there. Um, I hit this with kind of 800, uh, so you can see a little bit how those are different, uh, have a different sheen. Um, a little bit of the... Uh, uh, polyurethane glue came up through it of course that's to be expected um, actually chipped this all by myself um, just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing it, of course uh, when I went to cut this out from the back I cut a single uh, line around it popped this out and then trimmed uh, which is good in theory but uh, it actually sort of enabled that to happen I probably should have cut two lines um, or just been more careful. Uh, good news is, is that not only can I touch that up, it's uh, hidden by the uh, the chrome bead that goes around. So this has a bead uh, that goes around the glow box cover on the inside of the hole, and then um, there's one literally that goes all the way around this thing. Uh, so that's pretty wicked. Um, I love the pattern. I think it came out really good. I can't imagine. If this is what it looks like raw, I can't imagine what a little finish and uh, the clear is going to do with this. So the uh, the dash now is ready for the top coat. So the epoxy should get here, um, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe three days, maybe two. Um, and so we'll be able to get on that. Uh, I think the epoxy, gosh, I... I'm afraid it's got to cure for a couple days before I can go with the clear cut on it. So it'll be a little while after that. Um, if, if you notice, if it looks different, it is. Um, you can see more of the variation um, of the grain and the burls. I've got a uh, an aniline dye that I went in with to get uh, one part. Not really much of a change of color, but it kind of locks that in. And then I've got... Um, 
the old style uh, thing called Pour Pack. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, Pack of Pour. Um, and it's like a, a, a grain filler. And uh, you can tint that. And uh, I tinted that with a little bit lighter color um, to bring out, uh, well, I don't know if you can see it, but once this is clear, you'll see it. Um, it'll bring out more of the, of the green that's in there. Um, so you've got sort of, I mean, the walnut already had color variation going on, but now it's, it's got more color variation. Um, I also was trying to get a little bit of red uh, to mix in with the green better and then a little bit of the lighter colors to get in with the biscuit to try to pull all three of these together um it's a it's it's not the easiest color combination um but i, I like this I, I wish the uh the biscuit that they supplied was a little bit different color but it's fine um all right so i'm going to put these away safely uh i cover them back up uh uncover the car uh, i'm gonna move some things around I'm gonna get the uh the, you know the tub is just sitting on the frame we'll get it uh still again temporarily tightened down because um well we can get it to the uh the chassis post in the front we can get that in but um we'll need to shim it um a little bit when we we're getting the doors to fit uh but we're gonna start the wiring harness right after this so that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so I realize these videos are taking a little too long. So I skipped to the end here. I've gone ahead and done the top coat. This ended up being about uh, 23 uh, layers of SPI Universal Clear. Now each one of those is sanded down just about off. So really what we did was get uh, a bunch of layers to fill in some areas here. And there were some other areas up in this top here. So we haven't done the chrome yet. Um, so we'll do that next. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Let you see what this looks like. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, there were some issues here. Remember we had this uh, chip here. Uh, but the uh, chrome uh, edge that goes around it will fix that. So that's going to wrap up this part, and uh, like I said in the previous uh, segment here, we would get to doing the wiring. Um, so we'll pick up with that one uh, in just a little bit. And hey, thanks for watching.